Is this considered legal? You don't know these people. Then all of a sudden you're locked up. There's perfect strangers coming in and playing with me. This is silicone loop. And this one also suspends. Is this uh, is good for suspension? People were beating me and tying me up. And there are like cameras everywhere. If a girl started screaming her head off, I'd be able to hear it. If you're up there and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't like, call I call it, but like they might not obey that, and that just like gives me yeah. chills. Are you claustrophobic? Slightly, but I don't care. Do you want me to call you like Mistress Snow or? Let's go inside. And okay, you okay, okay. Oh, sorry. Are you not allowed to talk about prices? This is not what we agreed upon. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Hello. I know. Do you mind if I turn the camera on you? That's what we were. I know. We I don't. I, I, I didn't want to surprise I know, you. Okay. So, hi. Come on in. Thank you. Welcome. I'm Matt. Nice to meet I you. Know. Do, do you want me to call you like Mistress Snow or? Let's go inside. Okay, 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 sorry, okay. I'm better looking in person. Really? Thank you. Come on in. Oh my gosh, it's big. It is big. <gasps> wow. Yeah. Because you're taller than me right now. Are you, wait, are we the same height? Or okay, yeah, sit, sit normal and then I'll show you. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> it's kind of cute. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like it's important. It's gonna... I am so happy to be here. Oh, good, good. I'm so glad to, have, to meet you. Coming here, there was, you know, you, it, the most extensive process I've, I've had with someone being interviewed so far. Like, we had to make a contract, which I love. Like, we make a contract. We had a lot of communication about it. And I can imagine that comes from past experiences of being taken advantage of in terms of journalists coming here, exploiting the situation. I just want to make sure, like... I'm not going to be exploited or made fun of. You are very respectful and you really want to learn it and Truly. and respect the people behind, you know, what you're talking about. So that I really appreciate. Thank you. <laughs> so how long have you owned this dungeon for? I opened the dungeon in 2016. Going on seven years. That's yeah. like a really big accomplishment. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, to own this big space and all these, which I'm sure are very costly, yeah. it must have felt like, wow, I did this shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm, I'm pretty grateful. I survived COVID too as well. And I'm completely women owned and operated. I don't have anybody else um, who owns a place with me. Some things have been gifted though. From the men that come in here or yeah yeah I've had um a few of my clients who just really believe in me and who really appreciate me they've they've told me like oh you need this so they'll like pay for it do you have a lot of rich clients I don't know their bank accounts but um there are quite a few wealthy clients because yeah, I, I would yeah. I would think in the BDSM world there's a lot of wealthy guys because in their main life they're so in control in everything that they do and they're the boss of everything that they want this side of life where they're not in control and you're the one in control. A lot of the clients are, you know, high powered men, lots of money, they own businesses, they're attorneys, they're doctors. It's more accessible if you're rich <laughs> to come because this is not a cheap hobby. You have to have money to come in here. And they pay per hour or what, what is the... Yeah, it's a, it's an hourly rate to do in-person. I also do um, online sessions, I do phone sessions. The in-person sessions are definitely more expensive. Are you not allowed to talk about prices? I can, I can actually give you a price. It's not like that big of a secret. Okay. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Good. I know. So I can tell you this. It starts for me, it starts at $400 an hour. If I go out call, it's going to be at least 500 an hour to start two hour minimum I have been considering raising my prices I know there's women that are charging more per hour to start about 320 right now is the minimum in Los Angeles so yeah it's a luxury this is silicone lube what's what's just for to make it look shiny or this makes it look shiny it also keeps it supple because uh, this is latex and it can get dried out so you add some shine to it it's also considered a, a treat to lube your mistress so mm. this is actually something people want to do <laughs> they want to get down and they'll get on their knees and shine me up i think i was born kinky i had ideas and thoughts that just seemed like oh these are naughty as i got older i met people who were interested in like spanking and bondage and so we played around with some of that my very first experience was terrible like we did bondage and we used the wrong kind of rope it was my idea we didn't know what we were doing and this is back before the internet we had to learn like the hard way through trial and error then i met a dominatrix who was in charge of the upstairs room at bar sinister in hollywood she said oh honey you need to come work at the dominion oh my goodness could i possibly do this it took a year applied 
they hired me as a submissive and that was just that was the end I found my people all the women just were like kinky and perverted perverted in a good way and uh, we would talk about things I was like oh I never thought other women like existed like me. It just was very validating. And a person gets strapped into here. So here is a harness for the chest mm -hmm. and then for arms, legs, and even four feet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Wow. And it's really smooth. Yes. Oh my gosh, she goes so fast too. Oh my gosh. And so you can even put the person upside, upside down. down. Here is a sleep sack, a leather sleep sack. Uh, it's also by Fetters, so you would you would fit in this. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you would be able to fit into this. Um, oh my gosh, it's, yeah. it looks so small. You think so? Like, well, down, is that for your legs? This is, yeah, this is for your feet. It's I mean, almost like a fancy sleeping bag. You know, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> and this one also suspends. Is this uh, is good for suspension? So I can lift a person up. You can also see inside. I'll show you. There's <clears throat> these um, an area to put person's arms go into there when you're inside. Oh, so your wow. arms actually slip into there. So you're got like, it. mummified. Some people would just uh, can fall asleep. They just get really just zoned out and just peaceful it's this is a very it can be a very peaceful type of play got it because not all play is necessarily you know pain and scary or angry some of it <laughs> can be just like really just like peaceful and kind of like going to another like they just want to go to another space what is this cage this is a, a man-sized cage it's a vertical cage so someone can be placed inside and there's three different doors that open so if you just want to put somebody in here and kind of mess and tease with them you know and you can have a uh, better access through one of these doors and i can lock them up i have locks like real padlocks oh my god i do have a um, bolt cutter just in case <laughs> do they actually I've, get locked yeah in? i've never i've never had to use it i mean come on i mean this is this is not i mean if i we had to we could also just you know unscrew these bolts it's role play right i mean there's a lot of role play and fantasy in here i mean like if somebody wanted to leave they can leave if they had to if somebody if it was too much for them they can just use the safe word yeah and then i have to honor that and let them you know let them go <laughs> so, <laughs> so, does anyone yeah. ever use a safe word but not actually want like mean to use a safe word you know what i mean yeah yeah there's like um there's we can play around with that we can say like oh there's can you know consensual non-consent and and then they can be like no no whatever you do don't do this and like have mercy on me that could be part of the role play as exactly well. even if they use to say for it doesn't mean that we have to completely stop we could just you know pause chat a little bit or maybe take a little break and then get back to it so you said yeah. there's no sex in bdsm in the in the dominatrix world mm -mm. there's no sex exchange so there's no you know intercourse no and nothing that ends with the with a job. I mean, it is an erotic experience and it's a sensual experience, but it's not a sexual experience. Is that why, is this considered legal? It's a gray area. It's a gray area, yeah. yeah. So me renting out the place, totally 100% legal. And then me playing with somebody, as long as, so if you, okay. It's against the law for me to promise activities for money, but I can, I, you can see me for my time. So I can't promise you anything for money. Okay. Yeah. You can get into trouble, though, if you're doing certain things and advertising that you're doing it for money. It's like, for example, like strap on play, that's considered illegal for money. Beating somebody can be kind of, you know, if you're hurting somebody, is that consensual? Is, is there consensual abuse? I know in Las Vegas, you definitely cannot. You can't beat somebody in Vegas. You can get arrested if they catch you. Are there ever situations like that where the guy asks for that and then you do that and then not you but anyone and then and then they go and you can get in trouble for that you can get in trouble yeah you can, yeah I, I haven't heard about it in los angeles but in las vegas yes so even if it's 100 percent consensual you can write it down they just still like nope that's illegal we can just raise them maybe a little bit or can even raise them up on their toes to completely do full suspension. You know, I have to make sure the person is healthy enough for something like that. All right, so I'll show you how to get into it. Okay. 
interested. Yes, interested oh my gosh, yes, 100%. <laughs> Go ahead and you can just sit down. And, yeah. Hold on to these, right? Yeah, and then um, you can hold on to, yeah. Oh. Okay, so this, this, yes. let's try this again. Okay, okay. You come back here, hold on to these. Okay, okay. Yeah, sorry. No, no, this is good, this is good. And then you kind of like, yeah, it's a, like it's like when you're a child. <laughs> okay, 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 I can do this. You I believe, this, yeah. I believe in myself. Oh yeah, okay, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so get in there. Uh -huh. Oh my gosh! And now put one foot, I love what you're wearing, brother. Thank you. here. Okay, we got that. Just like that. Thank you, oh my you're gosh! Welcome. One foot in here. Okay, good, good, good. And now you can hold on to, here, hold on to this. Hold on to these, make you relax a little bit more. Oh my gosh. Yeah, relax a little bit more, there we go. If you are one of those that have been wanting longer episodes and a way to support me and the channel, I started a Patreon. Thank you so much for your support. Do people in your normal life know all about what you do? I don't know exactly in my vanilla life, who knows? I try to keep everything separate and appropriate. Like if I'm in a vanilla situation, I try not to like talk about this. If someone brings it up, yes, I might talk about it, but I just, I just try to keep very appropriate. Because of like the judgment that they're gonna have on the situation. There's the judgment, and also it's just if we're in a vanilla environment, that's not why they're there. They're you know if we're at like karaoke or something, they're <laughs> you're like sing the song. I know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like no, I know how to turn it off. Yeah. Exactly. Like I don't have to like right here where I'm not like yeah you know telling you you know you gotta do this and then you know hold the microphone like this. Bitch, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which would be kind of cool, honestly. Know, yeah. But you're very warm. Yeah, but I can be really bitchy and mean if I want to be. Especially if the person is just, like, horrible. And some people do that on purpose. They'll, like, try to rile me up and get me really mad and bitchy. And That's part of, like, the session. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they, they do that on purpose. They like, what will they say? They just won't listen to me. They won't do anything I say. And they'll just, like, say stupid stuff or they'll slap my ass or something. And I'm just like... Oh, hell no. Does that ever turn into something more dangerous because they're not listening to you? Do you know what I mean? No, I don't let it get to that point. And then sometimes I'll just be, I'll just ignore them. Because if they're doing that to get a reaction and they're not listening and they're not doing what I say, you're going to get ignored. And I'm just going to sit here and stare at you mm -hmm. <laughs> until you behave. Mm -hmm. So you've never had a situation where a guy takes advantage of the situation and you feel... Like you have to stop the session or a little unsafe. There's been some times I've had to kick, kick people out. Just like, this is just not working. This is not what we agreed upon. It's time to go. You got to get out of here. Not really so often anymore. I, I know how to screen people better. If you screen them right and get a vibe, it just doesn't happen very often. Yeah. What's the screening process? I have them send an email and I have zero clues pretty much of what to write in your email because I'm doing that on purpose to judge them, to see, can you write an email appropriately? Because I can learn so much by that first email. And then the next step is I have, I text them. How am I supposed to trust you if you can't even give me your phone number? And I'm not gonna send you anything inappropriate. I'm just like literally sending you the address. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing is I also have them send me a deposit. You can do Venmo, Cash App. I'll take an Amazon gift card. Oh, nice. <laughs> yes. The person who I'm playing with referred to them as a bottom. And the person can be, Mm -hmm. strapped into this or just even hold on you don't have to hold you don't have to be um clipped in the person will be clipped in or just stand here and get you know spanked or flogged and this is actually mobile i love that because i can move this anywhere it's, i can pick it up i can pick it up in high heels and it can be collapsed and taken i can take it in my car to places so sometimes i travel i'll bring it with me make myself a little dungeon inside of a hotel room i just have somebody crawl across the floor back and forth or have them you know, some sort of pretty outfit and make them walk pretty for me or crawl pretty for me. These little dog hats too. Are you so you do pup play and stuff as well? Yeah, yeah. Can I put it on? Yeah, do you want to put it on? Oh my gosh. Are you claustrophobic? I mean, slightly, but it'll be good. I, I don't care. I want to do it. I have a big head. Do you now? Oh my god. And then it would, yeah, and then there's also the collar that would go around and then, yeah, you know, so you can zip them up, zip them, you know, zip them closed, oh. zip them open. I mean, it's really quiet inside, isn't it? It is. It's, it's like, it's not that claustrophobic. It feels comfortable. Mm, good, good, good. Yeah, it's like the leather feels so nice, too. Is BDSM considered sex work? Oh, yeah, it's definitely sex work. It's considered sex work. But if you're not having sex, then why is it sex work? Good question. <laughs> well, I guess it's erotic. You know, we're doing torture to their and to their 
So that's considered sex work. And this is your first time working in sex work, right? Yeah, yeah. I was never a dancer. So I, a lot of, some women um, dance first and then come to BDSM. How is dating outside in the vanilla world when this is your career? For myself, I'll date somebody who's into BDSM. It's just easier. Are you single right now? I decline to state where I am. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I always like to be mysterious. Is that because you don't want your clients knowing that you're in a relationship with someone? Um, I just like to be mysterious. I like um, people to think they always have a chance. So... Yeah, you know, I like to keep people guessing. You are very, like, <laughs> mysterious and elusive, I feel like. I try to be. Yeah, there's some things people don't need to know. I keep my private, like, very private. Like, for example, I have um, a submissive who you met a little bit earlier. Like, you're not going to really ever know about her. <laughs> so, wait, yeah. so she's a submissive. So what does that mean for, like, so you you play with her? Sometimes, yeah, we play. Uh, and she just helps around here and, you know, helps. She's my assistant. And she does sessions. With clients? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so if you're a submissive and you have clients, does that mean that you're the one up on these things? You're the one. And that could seem a little scarier, though, because you don't know these people. And then all of a sudden you're locked up. That's how I started. I started as a submissive. So people were beating me and tying me up and suspending me and doing all kinds of things to me, <laughs> brutalizing me. To me, that my first thought in that is like, if I was to do it, I'd want to be a dominant, so I'm in control of the situation. There were some times where I was unhappy and had to call a session, where there were some times where it was dangerous and I had to like say no. There was perfect strangers coming in and playing with me. If you're up there and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't like, call, I call it, but like they might not obey that. And that just like gives me the, the yeah. chills. You know what I mean? No, no, thank you. Yeah, yeah. It never got to that point for me. A lot of the guys didn't want to get, they wouldn't want to get to that point because they would also get banned. So if you're like abusing them, they're not going to be welcomed back. Okay. There's a submissive doing a sub session here. I'll be in the building and just like know what's going on. And I, I make sure to like know the client or, or screen the client help screen them for the submissive. And there are like cameras everywhere. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh shoot, is that bad? Sorry. Oh yeah, no, it's okay, no, it's okay. No, there's no cameras inside here. There's just cameras outside. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, no, there's no cameras inside the rooms. Okay. Um, the only cameras are outside on the parking lot and on the door. I just but, assumed yeah. that for safety, but I guess you, I guess that also would uh, be like privacy issues. The guys would not want to be videoed. Yeah, I don't have any cameras in any other rooms. You can, or microphones or anything like that. <laughs> Okay, yeah. good to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, no. If a girl started screaming her head off, I'd be able to hear. I'd be in the office or some or in the kitchen, and I can hear it, hear something like that. What is your favorite thing about what you do? It's so empowering. I deal with people's deepest, darkest secrets. Mm. I deal with people who won't even tell their spouse what they're doing, or they won't tell their therapist what they're what they're into. And these people are so vulnerable, and they trust me with their secrets. And I know it's really important to them to act it out. And that's just a really good feeling to know that I'm able to do that. Because not everyone can do that. I think it's a special skill. We're just all human beings just trying to survive and get through this life. And <laughs> yes. It's so true. So what do you think you have in common with me? I mean, I love like your business mindset. Uh -huh. I love it all that you invest into your own stuff. Like I invest into my own equipment. Mm -hmm. I in you invest into these beautiful pieces. Like there is so much that we have in common. Like your passion for what you do is, is inspiring to me because uh -huh. I have such a passion for what I do too. And is there so many parallels uh -huh. really? No, I, you're going to go far. I can tell. You, no, no, you are. Like you, I think, yeah, just keep, keep Keep going at it. It's just like so much hard work. Just, just keep doing it. Keep doing it and show up. Be reliable. There's so many beautiful people out here, but if you like show up, do your job and do it well, you'll go far. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much for having me. Oh yeah, you're very welcome. Yeah, come back anytime. Okay. Later. Thank you. Yeah. Can I give you a hug? Oh, yeah, I'm gonna be oh you know what? I have silicone lube on me. So okay. I don't want it to get on your camera. Okay, anyway. we'll just do air hug. Okay, air hug. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you yeah. so much. I felt it still. I felt okay. the hug. Okay, I felt the energy, good. yes. Alright, back into normal life. World. All right, I'll talk to you soon, All right, okay? Okay, Bye. okay? Have a good day. Bye.